it's an absolute pleasure to welcome the lovely Cara, we call her Cara the Boardwalk, because she's the owner of the Boardwalk restaurant. We'll talk about that in a minute. Cara, Happy New Year. It's happy lovely New to Year, see darling. you. Thank Looking you. gorgeous. Cara is a model as well as restaurant owner, which is obviously uh, obvious. <laughs> Why? Cara, you've also, together with your restaurant, you've been supporting the Costa Christmas, which is a collection for gifts and for donations for the orphans in Malaga and the orphanages yeah. for 10 years. Yeah, I mean, we also so, do the domestic violence houses as well. Okay, so, so I'm just going to pass over to Cora. Can you just fill us in? Because I think 98% of our community has no idea that there are orphanages in Malaga, that there are domestic violence centres, or how involved you have been with the Spanish community yeah. for the last decade. So. Well, um, what it all entails. I think people are aware that there are orphanages, probably not how many there are and how many children there are needing help. Um, I don't think people are actually aware of just how much we need to be getting involved in order to make sure these children are having a good life. Um, certainly with things like going back to school, clothes, bags, this sort of thing, medications, even glasses actually um, that we need to support them financially with. Um, also, obviously, there's a Musevig, which is the domestic violence houses that we've been working with for 10 years. Um, and, I mean, it's only up to this year where we've really, I mean, the growth has been enormous. We started off with just the one orphanage. It was about 80 children. We then got up to about 500. And as, as a charity um, initiative, Costa Christmas Collections has grown and grown as the years have gone on. Um, this year, we did uh, our charity event at um, Alavanti in uh, the Marbella Yacht Club, uh, which is actually my sister's restaurant, and we was, we was very successful. We raised 6,800 pounds, uh, sorry, euros. Very um, impressive. Yeah, and I mean... And hundreds and hundreds of presents. I mean, yeah. you've got the community yeah. involved. There were the whole hundreds point of, of it, presents yeah. collected. Well, the whole point of Costa Christmas Collections and the reason I actually started it was I do believe people want to get involved uh, on a more personal level. Everyone can throw a tenner into a tin and think that they've done something for charity, but I do... I think it's important that we get our children involved, take them out, let them buy a gift for a child and let them get a sense of accomplishment and achievement from that. Um, I think the more thought involved is only letting our children go uh, into what we want them to be. They need to be, you know, community spirited. They need to know how lucky they are and, you know, that there's a lot of disadvantaged children out there. Um, and I do think it's important that, you know, as a community, we, we all help each other. We all get involved and we, we really do get the children involved. And I think it's really important that schools, I mean, we've had amazing support from schools um, and the community. So we've been really, really lucky to have grown as much as we have. Have, even though I must say it is overwhelming at points I mean when I started this I was married I had a whole network of people that was helping this year it was me and one of my friends sort of driving around doing the collections yeah, but, and also um, your children are growing yes and this is something that I think a lot of people forget children grow and they get they very do. quickly and if you're not at home with them and you don't have that time for them when they get eight, nine, ten, in the sense it's very important. I think it's a very wise move that you've brought this to such a point now that you can actually hand it over yeah. to get that fresh injection yeah. of looking at things differently. I think it's a very clever move to get more well, time. Well, I've been extremely lucky. Um, I've spent a lot of time in Ireland this year and um, seen the huge problem that they have with the homeless there, particularly with the young, um, a lot of them with substance abuse uh, problems um, and it's something that I really really wanted to get involved with but um, having such uh, passion for the orphanages and things I was concerned about it being taken over um, and going into a new direction and I do think that it is good to get a bit of fresh meat if you like um, running things so I'm very lucky that Teresa Labour from Elociano um, her Paris boutique um, is going to be taken over from me with Paula Monaghan um, from um, Paula Monaghan Interiors and they're going to be doing a huge amount of work this year both with Amusavig and the um, orphanages and they're going to be doing obviously I'll support their charity events um, and, and obviously as I hope as, as you always do Nicole um, but well, I mean, even to that degree of passing it over, but to such competent hands. Yeah, and, and they really didn't are. just abandon it. I think it's uh, well. They've always done their own thing anyway. You know, they've always done a lot of um, uh, certainly helping myself with the co uh, cost of Christmas collections, and they did a huge collection for me this year. And Teresa was um, very interested in 
um, taken one of the orphanage off, uh, orphanages off of me. Um, she's obviously, she's got a boutiques all over the place, whatever, she just started a, a man and ch child range as well. So she's got a hell of a lot on, but she's got a huge network of people. She's got a lot of support and, you know, you do need that here. You know, we all have to stick together with these charity events in order to fill them and to make them successful. And I'm really sure that Teresa and Paula will do that. So I'm really excited to hand over, let them bring something fresh and new to it and let me sort of slide away quietly and uh, get on to helping with Ireland, which I'm really, really passionate about. Well, it's absolutely super that you're doing that and something for back, you know, where you feel that your roots, you can do something good. But even um, with AAA, the other day you, you go there to AAA, which is our dog animal rescue centre in Marbella, and people don't realise Again, it's the volunteers that keep that place going. Yeah. And people like you, you were there, see an old dog come in and it's okay, this one has to have a home. Well, what we did was we'd seen that Daphne, an old boxer, I mean, she was, I think she's 11, she'd been dumped in the shelter. Um, she was very sad, she didn't want to eat. Um, so we went down and rescued her and off she went to live with my mum, which is pretty much standard that one of us have to take the oldies on. Um, but. It was really heartwarming actually to see the amount of support that AAA do have. A lot of people were up there. I love to see so many children, loads of the kids, I mean I took my children, um, but loads of the kids were up there giving treats, giving cuddles to the puppies and walking them. And uh, we'll all be there again this weekend. Every Steve Saturday Wiley. is all dog walkie walkies at AAA. Yeah, Steve Wiley's amazing. I mean he he's a young, good looking, marble like guy, you know. Um, it's not the usual guy that you'd expect to see at AAA by any stretch of the imagination, but he's there week in, week out. I don't think Jan will be out. very happy to hear you say that. Who? Jan Wyman, <laughs> you just say that. <laughs> no, but it is, it is nice and it is refreshing to see that there are people coming from all different walks of life. I mean, you expect to see Steve in the local bars, you know, there with his muscles and his tattoos, being eyed up by all the women, and yet every weekend he's down there walking the dogs, he knows them all by name, you know, he knows their, their temperaments, and it is lovely to see that so many people are getting involved, and I can only hope that more people will go up there and walk with dogs um, as the year goes on, supporting them financially and obviously with blankets and treats. Exactly, because it's the supplies as well that make yeah, all the Yeah, I mean, it doesn't difference. come from anywhere, does it? You know, people do need to give. The, you know, these are charities. And at the end of the day, it is only the communities that have put these dogs there. So um, it is, no, but they do have a lot of support um, with, with especially children and things walking them. So it was nice to see. And I'll be there again this Saturday with a hangover. <laughs> It doesn't matter as long as you're there, right? It's like, I know for you as not. long as you're there. The ballwalk was closed down for a few months, which was also nice to give you a bit of a yeah. break. When are you going to be reopening? We reopen March 16. Um, we're just having a bit of a refurbishment at the moment in the kitchen and the bar. Obviously, you need to freshen things up. Um, but what I was hoping to be a nice break isn't so much because there never is with a refurb. But um, we're really excited this year. Um, I've got my twin sister who's just about to have a baby. Congratulations. Um, yeah, we're very excited. Um, well, we never expected that she would, so it's lovely that we're now going to have a little girl. Um, and she's going to get far more involved in the ball ball this year, obviously. She has Mirage. And it was the first year last year, and as you know, she uh, they won Marbella Nightclub of the Year, which was amazing. But she's going to get far more involved in the ball ball this year, so it's going to be nice to have my twin back. Um, and we've got a new fresh menu. We've got an, our old head chef back, which is, I can tell you, amazing. Because we had a bit of a tough year last year, staffing wise, as you know, a lot of the restaurants here, um, staff was not great in Marbella. We seem to be seeing a decline of good staff year after year. But um, this year our team's already set. We've got a new fresh menu. We're back to our best as I'm now promoting um, with uh, our old head chef. So really excited to open the doors again. Well, it's nice because that's a big weight off your mind when you know yeah. that you've got the staff in well, place. Well, it's everything, can... isn't it? Your staff are everything. And the, the problem with me is I adore my staff, as you know. You know, I love them all. And um, when you lose them because they go to their own countries or whatever, it's always tough for me. I always feel like I'm losing a child. But um, we're really lucky that we've got the whole team coming back this year. And obviously to have Nick, our head chef, coming back is just a real weight for my mind. And I can't wait. We've got the whole pizza kitchen opening. And it's going to be really fabulous because we do the kids making their own pizzas, obviously. So it's a whole new pizza Oh, that'll be kitchen. a lot of fun. Yeah, it's going to be really, really fabulous. I'm, I'm excited to open the doors again. And it's already a very popular place. I mean, the food's very fresh. In fact, when you closed down, I was disappointed because I have great fresh vegetables. <laughs> but not many restaurants actually... Do no, you do we, that? It's a very homely, home cooked but professionally presented. Yeah, thank you.
Thank you. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we do everything fresh, everything's homemade, even down to the bread. We do gluten free, we do a lot of vegan option. Obviously, we don't eat meat, dairy, and gluten, so we do try and um, put that into My the restaurant. My daughter and well. uh, son in law are both vegan. Yes, I know. So I know. I'm, I'm, I'm always quite commenting a fan. that there are not enough places here to actually go that give you a, a decent option. I mean, obviously we have um, a lot more organic and vegan places opening up, but I do think it's it's either all healthy, I like to be not so healthy, I, you know, I like chips with my salad, so <laughs> I don't think you usually find that in the organic places and a lot of the vegetarian options and what have you, but it's certainly something that we, well, we take do Take note, offer. because, uh, exactly, because everyone can organise it as they want, not too yeah. much of one. Yeah, you need, you need a bit of fried of food on there. <laughs> and she's looking good on it. You uh, are a model, but you like, I, th I think you, you have beautiful tattoos and you're very proud of your tattoos. I don't know how you could be tattoos. brave enough to even try them, but you'd actually been doing some bikini modeling for Virginia Macari. Yeah, yeah, well, we've I've Showing been her beautiful bikinis and your beautiful tattoos. I mean, you are stunning. Thank you, hon. Um, you wouldn't say that if you saw me in the morning. Makeup does great things for women. Um, but yeah, no, I've been doing a lot of um, all different type modeling uh, at the moment. Um, I did get to do Virginia's bikinis, and Virginia's actually going to be helping me with Ireland. I absolutely adore Virginia. Um, she's a great girl. She's going to be helping me with um, the homeless in Ireland at Christmas. And we're really lucky, actually. We've got um, Richard Keeley, who's an MMA fighter. He's going to be helping us as well. And Mark Quinlan, obviously, who's quite a famous chef in Ireland, and my brother-in-law. So um, there's going to be a whole network of us going back and helping. And I'm really, I mean, I can't wait to get started with it and just try and make a difference to these, these young kids. And I mean, they really are. I mean, they're 17, 18 years old, some of them, sleeping on them freezing streets. It's, it's really quite sad. Um, but yeah, it's going to be amazing to make a difference there. You are an amazing person. It's lovely to see such youth and beauty invested in doing something good, not just for our community, but back home as well. Cara, it's been lovely to chat with you. I always love coming to see you, Nicole, as and, you know. And back at you. <laughs> Have a great year. It sounds and like you, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be fabulous. Yeah, I'm here in Marbella, but it says here I'm in La Canada. If you haven't mastered the lingo, don't worry. Linear Director has a free GPS geolocator service that will come and find you. Hey, hey. This next section is sponsored by Linear Director, tailored made expat car insurance. When you're out and about with your kids, please keep your eye on them and particularly when you're getting out the car while you're organizing yourself you need to know where your children are and I'm saying this because unfortunately last week a little boy lost his life by being run over by someone backing out of a parking space it wasn't the driver's fault that he ran the child over and I'm sure it wasn't the grandfather's fault really but the child wasn't being watched it's no one's fault but the consequence is dramatic it's devastating and it is forever when you're driving and you're getting in a car or you're backing up, please take that extra time to make sure, if you can, there's nothing behind you. And when you've got little children, you have to keep your eyes on them all the time. This next section is sponsored by Linear Director, tailored made expat car insurance. Hey, hey. Tomorrow is Thursday. That means there's a new Euro Weekly News. Remember to pick up your free copy, check out what's going on locally, and also to check out my column, Marbella Moments. And we'll be back tomorrow night at 8 p.m. with another episode of Marbella Now. In the meanwhile, take care of yourselves, be nice to each other. See you tomorrow. And it's time.